bow down before the one you serve. You're going to get what you deserve. Bow down before the one you serve. You DVR too much shit now. You can't watch it before it's full. You watch too much TV, you know. I thought this would be an interesting intro. As I know the captain loves original music, and this is my reply and rebuttal to his um, take on the H, the Media Sonic Homework with an X, uh, WH150 uh, tuner and DVR. So here we are. As you can see, my configuration setup is a lot different than his. In the realm that I don't name or edit anything, I just leave it raw, and it's a little more confusing, but you have to figure out the time, the date, and then the file format, and that. I have a Simpsons that's about to start there. Um, shows how much space it's using, what date it is, and basically I just use this to record the Simpsons Family Guy and maybe some PBS content. It's a nice device. I like it overall. I'm glad I got it. It was probably about... Uh, 30 40 bucks for the box itself, the one that you can see right there that has no lights on. There we go, the sun's kind of getting it better, so you can see it over there. And yeah, this is a cool device. I've, I've really gotten my money for it out of it, and I'm kind of debating if I'm going to upgrade to a fancier one. Uh, it's nice in the realm of how adaptable it is to various situations that one would want to view media content from, especially live media content. As this has an ATSC 1.0 tuner built in. So if your television, if you have an old CRT TV or other television that doesn't have a compatible receiver built in for that, like you don't have the QAM tuner to optimize your channel signals and that, you can get a fair amount of value just from that box in and of itself. And I'll go through that here in a minute. Uh, some of the other things with it that are nice is that it comes in both composite, uh, RCA, and uh, HDMI for an output on the signal. So you'll get a fair amount of value with that as well. It's a very simple, probably looks like a 90s, early 2000s interface for this. And I've looked at a lot of these. Uh, the guy who I found this from originally was Tyler the Antenna Man. And then uh, some of the other things that I've kind of gotten from it. I will plug Tyler's channel in the original video here. Um was just the overall value and interest that this has. It doesn't have to connect to the internet. For me, that's really not a major factor because I can go online and whatever, go there. Uh, for the captain, though, I know he's uh, really into sovereignty and freedom and does not duplicate costs or services. He has the internet on his phone. Why have it at home? So that would probably be pretty optimal. I've looked at a lot of the other variables with DVRs, and a lot of them, they have a number like this. But they're basically like this at the same thing at a higher price point. You know, most of them are single tuners like this one. Unless you bust 150 or beyond price point, you start getting TiVos, you start getting uh, all these other bells and whistles like Home Run DVR thing and uh, Channel Master DVRs. So you're going to be pretty much in the comparable category as this and probably the same technical issues. Now, I haven't really had technical issues, but I watch like three hours of this stuff a week, if that. That's kind of pushing it. Maybe an hour to two would be more of a realistic amount of viewing time that I do. But, uh, you can hit play here, watch it. You can hit hold, and it takes it to the full screen here. Oh, he's going to a comic book convention. Now we are viewing live television. As you can see, here's the signal strength meter. I don't know how well it shows up, but it shows each of those dots means the quality of signal. I can hit the info button here, and you hit it twice, and it says this is your bandwidth that you're on, your frequency within that, and then it shows we're at about 56% for frequency quality. This is on Iowa Public Television. They broadcast statewide and have pretty decent content, I would say, overall. Now it's showing the PSIP information there for what's offered. And they have a pretty extensive one for content of what they're actually offering here. So um, I'm going to hit the 
exit button here and we'll look at the TV itself. So there's that. I'm going to re recall. There's the recall button here. I hit that. I'm going to have it revert to another PBS station. Well, I guess it's the same one, but... Okay, we'll try... Four. So we're going to try a different one. And look at how, well, it's signal strength kind of dropped down. But we're going to check our signal strength here again. That's something that kind of interests me a lot. I like looking at signal strength for picture quality. This is almost at 80%. I'd say it's probably one of the better signals I receive here. There's the frequency again. Um, it's just interesting to kind of look at. Almost as interesting as some of the content on broadcast television. Um, going to just mute it so we don't get a copyright claim. Because there's a lot of glass blowing going on. But... I just found this to be kind of an interesting tool and, and thing. And I haven't had many of the issues that the captain's had here, but I've also utilized it probably 1% of how much he's actually utilized it. And I've been more more of an intellectually curious approach to it. And, and some of it, it's nice to have the recorder where you can get out of the um, commercials and such on the commercial television things. I'm going to show the boxes and the guide next. I kept those so I can share that with you guys here. So here you see the box. It says Mediasonic Home Over the Air Video Recorder or PVR has it in English and Spanish. There are no subscription fees. Freedom to set recording schedules. Unlimited recordings. Well with one tuner. That's the only downside with it. Um, just a nice little box. It advertises it as a PVR. You can see the box itself there from a different angle. You connect to the USB port on the front. Um, the box that, or the DVR that I have and also that the captain has is the one that Tyler the Antenna Man recommended. It is self-powered through the USB. It doesn't use an external power supply. But it's still a pretty decent one. Um, these are just configurations, wiring, all that stuff. Here is the box itself. It is a WH, so William Howard 150 PVR, and that's a personal video recorder. I like that there's no reoccurring cost, and it's pretty cheap and simple. And I think for someone who uses it minimally and doesn't really care much about broadcast television, like I'll watch weather, PBS, and then a couple of comedy shows here or there. This is really an optimal return on investment. You do buy back your time by not watching the commercials, and you do um, get the re, re, um, quality to review and rewatch certain programs. And this also doesn't use any data, which is pretty cool. Anyhow, Captain, I hope you have many more years of life enriching content and uh, viewership from that DVR. I've enjoyed mine. I'm not sure what direction I'm going to go in the next few months, though. I might try more of an integrated uh, um, Roku one because that just kind of intrigues me some and I could just put this on a secondary television just for audits of quality for video and, and uh, signal strength so hope you all enjoy like subscribe fight in the comments section